Hello and welcome to the Complex Regional Pain Syndrome Lecture. This is a first lecture structured around uh, Complex Regional Pain Syndrome. So let's begin. So what is Complex Regional Pain Syndrome or CRPS? So this is a chronic pain condition and basically most um, often it's going to affect one of the limbs. So either your arm or your legs, uh, hands, and this usually happens after some sort of trauma or an injury that you sustain. So basically, uh, CRPS, it's thought to be a result of some sort of damage or injury to the peripheral and central nervous system. And just to remind you, the central nervous system is going to be composed of your brain and your spinal cord. And the peripheral nervous system is going to be all those nerves in the periphery. And then together, you know, the brain and the spinal cord are going to communicate and signal uh, to the rest of the body and they're going to communicate with all those peripheral nerves. So chronic regional pain syndrome is basically um, thought to be a sensory, motor, and autonomic dysfunction, a dysfunction of peripheral and central nervous system. And basically what it is, um, it's characterized by very severe um, prolonged pain that usually persists and um, even you can see drastic changes in the skin. Uh, you can see the colors changed here so it, uh, the skin can get very dark here. It's sort of reddish but you can see the normal skin tone is completely different on the other leg. Uh, you can see uh, changes in the nails, uh, changes in the hair growth patterns on the affected limb. Also um, dramatic swelling and uh, the hallmark sign of CRPS, it's basically going to be allodynia. Or if you remember what allodynia is, it's an abnormally painful response to a stimulus that's normally not painful. For example, you know, if I lightly tap you on your leg, that normally wouldn't provoke pain. But in a case of CRPS, this would cause you to feel very severe pain, perhaps, you know, 8 out of 10. And CRPS can also be described as an abnormal response that is going to amplify effects of the injury. It's sort of almost like having an allergic reaction in a way. So you have this mild sometimes trauma or an injury and then you can get very severe case of this disease from that. Uh, currently there are no uh, clinical solid diagnostic criteria so there's not like a test called CRPS diagnostic test one that you can do. It's basically based on the clinical symptoms and there are no gold standard to manage. You're just basically going to treat this as a neuropathic pain disorder. Most cases are mild and patients tend to actually recover over time. This is also a fairly rare condition but um, severe cases can actually lead to long-term disability and you will see an example of that because this is such a debilitating disorder. So there are two different forms of chronic regional pain syndrome and this is going to be CRPS1 and CRPS2. In the past CRPS1 is used to be known as RDS or reflex sympathetic dystrophy and CRPS2 is used to be known as Casaldra. And basically both of these forms of CRPS have and present with the same symptoms. The symptoms can vary in severity and duration, but the idea is that both CRPS1 and both CRPS2 will have the same symptoms. And you also use the same treatments to treat both. The actual difference between the two is that in CRPS1, you don't have an established nerve injury, meaning, you know, they're... Um, case reports in medicine that are described when somebody, you know, lightly bumped into the table uh, with their back and then they would develop a severe case of CRPS1. So, you know, normally bumping into the table wouldn't cause you to have severe injury to the spinal cord, right? That's why there's no established nerve injury. You just develop CRPS1, but you don't actually have um, a nerve injury that you clinically could identify versus in CRPS2, nerve injury is established. For example, somebody suffers a trauma to their spinal cord in a car accident, and then they develop CRPS, so that would be CRPS2. So how is CRPS actually diagnosed? 
Well, the symptoms are going to vary in severity and duration, but uh, International Association Study of Pain basically de uh, defines um, CRPS as pain, allodynia, or hyperalgesia that are going to be disproportionate to the initial injury. And if you remember this slide from earlier lectures on pain management, you remember that allodynia is going to be pain in response to a stimulus that doesn't normally provoke pain. And you can see that this is a stimulus intensity and this is a normal pain response. So allodynia is here. So you have a stimulus that doesn't provoke pain um, but you feel a strong pain in response to it versus how hyperalgesia is basically when you have an exaggerated pain response from a stimulus that does provoke pain but it wouldn't provoke it to the same extent um, that you're feeling and both of these are going to be commonly seen in different peripheral neuropathies and different pain disorders and they actually tend to affect about 10 to 15 percent of patients with neuropathic pain is what I read in some of the sources. So both of those are going to be used as diagnostic criteria for CRPS. Also there's going to be evidence of some sort of edema, swelling. You might have changes in skin. You know we saw here that the skin was very red and here the edema, the swelling um, that you can see. That's another diagnostic criteria. And then abnormal pseudomotor activity in the region of pain. So there are no other conditions that would otherwise account for the degree of pain, meaning it's sort of like a diagnosis of exclusion almost, right? So there's nothing else that you could think of that's going on and your clinical symptoms fit into the picture. So you would think of CRPS by exclusion. And like I mentioned, there's no gold standard for investigation, but um, this specific test, triple phase bone scan, has proven useful. So... Um, who can actually get CRPS? Well, what's your typical CRPS patient? I put this picture in here because it illustrates it beautifully. Everybody, meaning anybody including you. So um, it's not a sort of condition that you would, you know, think of a certain patient population getting. Basically, anybody that can suffer a trauma or an injury can get CRPS. So it seems to be rare in children and in elderly, and children before the age of five don't seem to get it. But majority of people that tend to get it are actually, you know, young individuals, and they are before the age of 40, and it's actually more common in women. So what's the ideology of CRPS? So it's basically a multifactorial disorder. And it could be described as an aberrant host response to tissue injury. So here's an actual picture of an RDS patient. Just to remind you, RDS reflects sympathetic dystrophy as uh, CRPS form 1. And this was a young adult who was a working class adult. So he was physically working and he suffered a trauma to his leg, um, a work injury. And this is multiple years later. The patient actually posted this picture himself on a medical forum. Uh, but you can see that multiple years later, he still has severe swelling. The skin is drastically different than the skin on his healthy limb. And um, another clinical symptom that he mentioned is that, you know, this whole limb is extremely painful. So virtually it would be impossible for this patient to walk not just because he would have a hard time finding the shoes that fit, but also because it would be extremely painful to physically walk and put the shoes on. So um, what is this process an exact, uh, an exact um, result of? So we don't entirely know, but it's basically a um, result of inflammation. So high level of inflammatory cytokines are going to be found. You have a dysregulation of autonomic nervous system. You have sensitization of the peripheral nociceptors. That's why you have that severe allodynia. That's why everything feels extremely pain, uh, painful. And you actually have maladaptive neuroplasticity. I remember we talked about this before. So your nervous system, it's not like it's set in stone. It's not concrete. It's very malleable and it's adaptive. So if you suffer some sort of injury, it's possible that the nervous system will undergo changes such that those, um, you know, that injury can actually have a very 
uh, drastic impact on your nervous system and it's going to change the way that it's wired and these changes are going to be detrimental. Uh, they won't be beneficial. So sometimes what happens with CRPS is when you have um, CRPS developed in one leg that you know supposedly or suffered an injury depending on a type of CRPS. So here it's um, CRPS1. The second limb that never was even affected or never had anything to do with a potential injury can actually get CRPS because the nervous system will undergo changes. You have neuroplasticity and then the second leg will adapt and then the second leg can be affected by CRPS. And also blood vessels can undergo changes too. So they can either dilate and become wider or they can constrict. And what that um, that will result in is basically will have changes in the skin appearance. That's why you have skin that's either swollen and very red or blue, blue and cold like skin. And obviously, you know, blood vessels, they do what? We talked about the circulatory system and how it supplies the cells of our body with nutrients and freshly oxygenated blood. So if the blood vessels, for example, constrict and, um, you know, the blood is not able to flow as well, the underlying tissue that's supplied by those blood vessels is going to suffer t damage. So you can actually sustain a soft tissue damage. So what are some of the symptoms of CRPS? So the two key symptoms we already talked about, allodynia, or painful response to a stimulus that's normally not painful, and also prolonged pain or very severe pain, uncomfortable pain. Those are the key symptoms of CRPS. So the pain is due to dysfunction in the nervous system. So it's a neuropathic sort of pain. That's why it's very common for people to experience pins and needle sensation. Uh, pain can be spread to entire limb that was affected by CRPS or other limbs. Also, you will have constant or intermittent changes in temperature, constant or intermittent swelling, uh, changes in the skin color, nail, hair, and growth patterns. You have abnormal movement of, of the limb. You can, you know, let's say um, you, with a leg like this, you might have a very hard time walking so that you will develop gait and um, muscle movements. And obviously you can develop severe stiffness in the joint because you have so much swelling here and so much pressure being put on the joints. So... This is going to conclude the end of lecture one, and in the next lecture two, CRPS lecture two, we'll talk about the treatment for CRPS. Thank you so much for your time, and I will see you shortly.